And so I believe prophetic words open things up yes. that the enemy has oh, shut so down. Because so when good. we read the Bible, it talks about if you believe in a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. Well, I mean, I'm reading what the prophets went through, sawn in half, uh, walking around in the wilderness. I'm like, I don't want a prophet's yeah. reward. So John and I really pursued, what does that mean? And actually to have a prophetic reward means you see things the way God sees things. He speaks to you and speaks through you. When I was um, when I was in junior high, my parents decided to get divorced, and it just threw me into a tailspin. I had went from being an amazing student to I'm going to be the worst student ever. But there was one moment where I had captured a very painful incident. My brother had fallen down the stairs, and I watched how my whole family had this complete meltdown. And for some reason, I I decided to write it all down. And my English teacher at the time, after I turned in the paper. Everybody had done a paper. She got up and she said, I'm gonna read the worst paper that was turned in to me. And she read mine. And I'm sitting there and I'm like shaking. And then she said, I'm gonna read the best. And she read uh, one of this young man who had just taken the lyrics from Jim Croce's song, Bad, Bad Leroy Brown. And just, <laughs> no. but I'm, not, I'm not a Christian at the time, but I mean, I felt so like attacked. I will never put my feelings down on paper. I will never subject myself yeah. to anything yeah, like that again. Yeah. And I'm in college at the University of Arizona. I'm studying systems and industrial engineering, but I have to take freshman comp. And I'm thinking, I'm just so annoyed that I have to take any English yeah. at all with all of my organic chemistry and all these other hard courses I'm doing. So I do a very sloppy job on my paper. I turn it in. I just want to be, see, I'm okay. And my teacher holds my paper back. I thought, oh my gosh, it's happening yeah. again. She's going to get up in front of everybody. I was like, where's my paper? And she said, I need you to stay after class. I'm like, okay, at least she's not going to do it in front of everybody. And she looks at me and she said, how long did you take to write this? And I said, well, I'm really sorry. I don't have a lot of time with my other classes. And I said, 20 minutes. And she said, did you do an outline? I said, I, I didn't. She said, you know what? You have a gift to write. Wow. And she said, I'm going to give this back wow. to you. You correct these things, and I'll give you an A. And wow. it was this moment where that met me. Years later, when my husband was writing his first book, he said, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this. And we turned it over to some other, but he turned it back to me. And I looked at him, I said, wait a minute. Somebody, when I was a freshman in college, told me I had a gift to write. Let me work on your book. Yeah. Wow. And so there was something that the enemy attacked. That's right. And then there was something that uh, both English teachers, one counteracted the other right. one. Right. Amazing thing is that young man went on to be a doctor. And I went on to be a New York Times bestselling author. So it's, yes. it's hilarious. It's kind of a yes. funny, it's, so but it's good. But yes. I, I often want to say, with the prophecies gone before you, wage good warfare. That's right. So I had that like somewhere in the back of my mind. But it's also very interesting to me that the enemy mm -hmm. will attack an entrustment. Yes. Yes, that's good. Sometimes when you're 12 or 13 years of age. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it'll shut something down. Yep. And so I believe prophetic words open things up. Yes. that the enemy has oh, shut so down. Because so when good. we read the Bible, it talks about if you believe in a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I'm reading what the prophets went through, sawn in half, yeah. uh, walking around in the wilderness. I'm like, I don't want a prophet's yeah. reward. So John and I really pursued, what does that mean? And actually to have a prophetic reward means you see things the way God sees mm -hmm. things. He speaks to you and yeah. speaks through you. And mm -hmm. if we ever needed that right now, it would be yeah. in this day. Yeah. It also so releases good. something. Like when Lisa called me, the way that it I would describe it is something. it released something in the yeah. spiritual world where it was nonstop after that. Mm -hmm. It was almost like there had been these floodgates and it was like she said out loud yeah. what other people had seen in me and known, mm -hmm. but no one had said out loud because the timing was not right. And she said it out loud and instantly it was like something was released. And I think that I've seen that even in other relationships that I've had on small scales or large scales, mm -hmm. when you say it out loud, it releases something. Yeah. And it's amazing how the kingdom around that comes alive. Like the spirit of God begins to move everything in that direction. When I was a kid, I started modeling. 
And we like, as you should, because you're beautiful. <laughs> Molly, then, right, it came with the pressure of like, you have to look a certain way. And so I used to have a lot of issues with my body image because of weight gain, you know, going up and down. And it made me just have this hate for it where I'm like, I don't want to do this. And as much as people would think I would love to be in front of the camera, I really did it because mm -hmm. I became very self conscious. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to model anymore. And so when I found myself in ministry, the Lord starts telling me to revisit modeling. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, absolutely not. You know, I, and I started Anything coming up that. with, yeah, and I was coming up with all the excuses. And he was like, I'm not telling you to start going for auditions. I'm just saying that there are things I will ask you to do that will be through like photographic content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, Lord, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and I started like coming up with all these reasons. And one of the reasons in my head was, I'm like, how can I do this as a pastor? That doesn't make sense. That was back then. You know, this is a new era. <laughs> And so one day I'm going to the grocery store. I'll never forget this. I was downtown LA and I was walking to the grocery store and there was a man on the street. It was like a homeless man who initially from afar, he looked like he had mental issues. And so when people are walking past him, he's like yelling at them and doing all kinds of weird stuff. And when I was walking past him, he looks at me, and he starts smiling. So even that whole thing about even how the prophetic comes in that nature of love. And he looks at me and says, they would say, how can a model be a pastor? But who cares? And he starts laughing out loud. Ha, ha, ha. I said, wait, wait, what did he just say? <laughs> what just happened? And I looked at him and he repeated it three times. He said, how can a model become a pastor? Then he said the third time. And then he said, look at the model pastor. So people are thinking that he's <laughs> mental. Sure. But I'm like... I don't even know what to do. If I should cry, if I should laugh, <laughs> if I should look around. Right. 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 And so I go into the store and it wrecked my whole day. And I'm like, wait, like, God, wait, what did you just do? Like, and so it hit me like in the love of God, mm -hmm. he used some random person on the street That's right. who, even though he was displaying like anger tendencies to everyone, the way he looked at me was full of so much love and acceptance. And I'm like, who is this man? Who is, yeah. who is with this homeless man, really? Right, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I remember, like, even though I was still struggling with it, it gave me this, like, okay, Lord, whatever you want me to do, whenever the time comes, that will be fine. Then my 30th birthday comes around. This is now years later. And the Lord gives me this vision for this, like, photo shoot he wants me to do. And I was like, oh, that might be a little risky. <laughs> but not in that, you know, risky, risky. <laughs> not risky business. But I was like, that is very artistic. It was really beautiful. And I was like, okay, sure. So we did the shoot. Now, fast forward to like just a few weeks ago, there was this artist in South Africa who painted as a mural in South Africa. And he reaches out to me recently. So first he's telling me, he's like, your ministry has literally, you know, impacted me. I just wanted to do this as a gift. But then he follows up and says, people are so intrigued by this mural. So they're finding him to find who is the face behind this. Wow. And now they're being led to the, the gospel. Word. Yes. Wow. So they're like, they're watching the messages. So people who came looking for like, oh, who is this model behind the model this the are now finding wow. the pastor. Wow. And I was like, God wow. is so tricky like that that's right. <laughs> you know? that's so right. just to say how the word of God opened that up because I do love photography but I started to believe my own lie because of the hurt mm -hmm. that came alongside yeah. it at TBN our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world and it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues God bless you